Hello, this is Dr. Frank Carruello. When I was 21 years old, or 22, I was a second year medical student in Mexico. At that time, my mother was 49 years old. And to our surprise, she was diagnosed as having gallbladder cancer. Cancer of the gland, or the, not the gland, but the sac, or uh, back that collects the bile from coming from the from the liver. Well, we went to all the traditional treatments, basically an extensive surgery, uh, chemotherapy, radiation, but eventually she died nine months after diagnosis. She was diagnosed in January and died actually in September. Uh, that was more than 30 years ago. But that event was a turning point in my life as a medical student. Because when I went through the suffering of my mother during the last few months and her death, when I was in, in the funeral home before the casket of my mother, I promised her that I would dedicate my life to help find a cure for cancer. And since then, I have been working in cancer research, cancer cell biology, molecular biology, experimental therapies of cancer, clinical trials, etc. In 2011, I actually published a book that I believe is a more logical explanation on the nature of cancer cells, the biology of cancer cells, the meaning the biological meaning of cancer. At, at the same time, I discuss a new way to treat cancer. However, I realized that the most difficult part for defeat cancer is not the cancer per se, but it's rather the industries that have been created around cancer, the cancer as a disease. In other words, cancer has become a very profitable disease. So we have a major industry in the traditional treatments, a major business. And then we have the alternative treatments, which is another big industry, a business industry. Then you have a combination of both. Nowadays, you will see, for example, Cancer Treatment Centers of America. If you go to, to YouTube you, and look for Cancer Treatments of America, uh, circle with drums, uh, and you will see patients with cancer from the institute outside around a, a fire pit uh, with drums, try to help healing. And then we have the real industry of alternative medicine now combining part of the alternative treatments. But I want to discuss with you the reality. The reality is this. Let me show you two illustrations so you can understand what I am talking about. OK, one of the things that I want to discuss is the following. And I want everybody to understand this. All cancers are curable. All cancers are curable. As long as we remove them when they are in the beginning, on the early stages of its development. They're removed completely with a surgery or destroyed with radiation locally or burning them with cautery, etc. So all cancers are curable with a surgery in the early stages of the disease. You see, see cancer localized to an organ or tissue, surgery is, is cure rate is 100%. However, if we use traditional chemotherapy, 0% of those patients will be cured. And this is the medical fact. All cancers are curable, and they have been curable for centuries if they are completely eliminated by physical or mechanical methods, such as radical surgery, cauterization, or the use of caustics or radiation. However, when a cancer is not, is inoperable, 
nor was the size of the tumor or the location of the tumor is such that cannot be removed surgically, or it has already spread or sent metastasis, surgery gives you a 0% curability, obviously, but a traditional chemotherapy also gives you a 0% curability. In other words, all cancers that could not be removed completely with a surgery or are technically inoperable due to their size or anatomical location or have already migrated to other organs or tissues metastasized are almost always invariably lethal. However, there, are, there is an exception here. The only cancers that can be cured today with chemotherapy, regardless of their clinical stage, localized or metastatic, are some rare forms of leukemias, rare forms of lymphomas, and the testicular seminoma, as well as the gestational choriocarcinoma. This is very important to understand. You may hear people cured with chemotherapy. Either those patients were treated for leukemia, particularly pediatric leukemias, lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, or Burkinson lymphoma, or seminal carcinoma, or seminoma, or a gestational choriocarcinoma. Okay, what is important to emphasize is that many people think that a stage four or metastatic disease is curable, but is not curable, well, we need to do some change there. Anyway, all diseases, all cancers, which are not these rare forms of leukemias or lymphomas or seminomas or choriocarcinomas, are invariably lethal today despite the use of chemotherapy or radiation if they have already metastasized to other organs or cannot be removed surgically. Now, you may hear that President uh, Carter was cured from a metastatic melanoma, or you may hear another person apparently was cured or has been alive with a, a breast cancer and so on. Let me tell you, those long-term term survivals have nothing to do with therapies. We know from centuries that about 10% of patients with melanoma will live more than 10 years, despite the fact that they have metastatic disease. The same we can say for breast cancer. People with breast cancer can live for 30 years or more without any treatment. We know that because we have the statistics uh, of those studies done prior to the development of chemotherapy. In other words, publications before 1950. Very good. Now, if we go to another form of therapy, which is the alternative therapies, again, if the cancer is localized to an organ of origin, and we use surgery because it's an early stage, it's a localized tumor, 100% of the people should be cured. However, if the cancer is inoperable, or there are metastases, neither surgery nor alternative therapies can help the person. No even alternative therapies will be able to help you with leukemias, lymphomas, seminoma, or choriocarcinoma. And this is the part that the purpose of this video is to really try to change the culture, try to change our way of thinking. Everything this is very common sense. Let me explain this for you. These are some of the so-called alternative treatments for cancer. We have, well, cannabis that you may hear, curcumin, the chloroacetic acid, DCA, dietary modifications like ketonic diets, or enzymatic therapies, or boosting the immune system and so on. In the area of alternative treatments, there are some treatments which are, are very popular. 
One of them is boosting the immune system. And here there are a great variety of products like transfer factor. Transfer factor, we have curcumin, and so on. Then we have diets, particularly diets without glucose. No glucose. Then we have other form of therapies that is related to alkaline and acid therapies. Then we have another which is very popular is nutritional. Nutritional treatments. You know, vitamins, so on, etc. Well, what I want to discuss here is each of them. We can actually see that they could not work. How many diseases can you cure by boosting the immune system? Let me tell you one thing. Cancer cells are cancers which originated from your own body. They are not coming from the outside. In reality, the immune system does not recognize cancer cells as foreign cells. That's the reason why cancer is a very silent disease. You don't have fever, you don't have a redness or pain in the area of the, where the tumor is growing like you normally have when there is a real a, agent which is foreign to the body and the immune system is attacking. Basically, the response of the immune system it characterizes for four forms, is pain, redness, a warm in the area, as well as fever. So none of those are present, present in cancer. So the immune system doesn't participate in combating cancer. It sounds very illogical to you, but it's the reality, many people in the past, they used to indicate that if the immune system was really directing against cancer, it will be, we had the ability to kill cancer, it will create a auto, autoimmune diseases. Well, I didn't like that explanation, but I'm going to the next one. Glucose, this is a very common uh, belief, or beliefs, beliefs of, in our community. It is true cancer cells utilize glucose. However, all our cells in our body also utilize glucose to live. Since cancer cells are cells which are more actively metabolically because they need to do functions like proliferating and eating the tissues around, they will consume more glucose. But it doesn't matter whether you eat or do not eat glucose, it will not have any impact on cancer cells. Why? Well, because the brain, our brain, utilizes about 70% of all the glucose that we consume because the brain only utilizes glucose for its normal functions. So we have in our body several mechanisms of protection for the brain because the brain is essential to life. So we always maintain our levels of glucose in blood very high, which is around 100 to 120. Uh, regardless of whether you eat sugar or not. That's why some people with cancer who have not been eating for weeks, they will maintain the normal levels of sugar in blood and the tumor will continue growing.
because the cancer cells are not really waiting to see what you're going to eat. They basically utilize the glucose from our own organism. So it doesn't matter whether you eat or not, our body we always maintain the same constant level of glucose in our blood. The same is with the alkaline or acid. It is commonly believed that cancer cells like acid, which is not true. Cells in general require a neutral pH, a neutral environment to grow. That's that physiological pH. However, the milieu or environment of tumors tends to be acidic because they utilize glucose and the end product of the metabolis metabol metabolism of glucose is lactic acid. Tumors normally do not have veins in a normal anatomy to excrete or drain everything that is being produced. That, ha that causes the lactic acid to be accumulated in the tumor, so the pH tends to be acidic. However, they actually hate it, and not only that, the acidic environment kills them. So, but regardless of that, people believe that by using alkaline diets or drinks or bicarb bicarbonate, uh, uh, sodium bicarb bicarbonate will uh, neutralize or reduce the acidic environment of the tumors. The reality is this, we produced about three liters of chlorhydric acid in the stomach every day. Three liters of uh, very, uh, a very strong acid. The reason of that is because our stomach requires to digest the meat that we eat, uh, vegetables and so on. So we produce a very strong acid. So it doesn't matter whether you take bicarbonate, it will be immediately neutralized or eliminated in the stomach because it's a very acidic environment. You will never be able to really uh, create uh, alkaline blood uh, for more than a second or so. Finally, we have the nutritional La, a area which is, for example, vitamins and so on. Once again, let me tell you this. Cancer cells are not stupid cells. The same things that helps normal cells will help them. They also utilize the same things, the same vitamins, the same antioxidant uh, or uh, anti-toxic type of drugs, uh, products that you are using they will be used by the cancer cell. Well, once again, this is Dr. Frank Arruello, and the real purpose of this video was to tell you that we need to change both our traditional therapies and alternative therapies. There are no such traditional alternative therapies. There are only therapies that work and therapies that do not work. And unfortunately, nowadays, none of the actual Therapies are helping people with metastatic disease, a stage four cancer, or cancer which is inoperable. Therefore, we need to change. That's what we need to be looking for, for a new way to treat cancer. Thank you very much.